Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortune. Couple of little bits before we get into the video. Firstly, and this is a massive, massive warning, so take heed. So next week, as in the week after you've seen this from Monday to Friday, I will not be around at home or anything. I'm going away on holiday uh, for the first time in years uh, with some friends. Now that does mean, of course, that I won't be able to record videos that week. However, I am going to try, in fact, I know I'm going to do this, I hope anyway, going to get all the videos for next week as well recorded this week, but that does mean I'm going to have to get a bit further ahead than I would like. Usually, I am barely even one episode ahead. Most of the time, by the time you've seen the episode, I've not even recorded the next one yet. It's great because it means we can proper have this interaction, but this next week and next is going to get a little bit more dicey uh, with that because, uh, well, I'm going to have to try and record like seven videos uh, during this week when I would normally record three slash four, depending on the analysis videos. So just bear that in mind uh, that when you're leaving comments about stuff in the videos that I might not be able to actually inter enact things as quickly as I normally will do uh, for the next couple of weeks. So just just bear that in mind. Second thing is my own idiocy. I accidentally put the last video up on Saturday because I am stupid. Um, no, I just basically scheduled it for the wrong day when I was uh, setting up the uploads. But hey, doesn't matter. You got it a day early. No harm done. Unless YouTube decided not to send it to sub boxes, uh, as I've been told. So uh, that's good. And the final thing is, since it is the start of the week, it's time to thank new patrons. And this week, it is Aiden and Andy. So seriously, guys, thank you so much. We actually hit the target of $50, which is pretty damn cool, which means I'm going to get myself a light so I can finally actually be lit up on this face cam stuff and not look like a shadow monster. Right now, in today's video, we've got two games at home. Sorry. Well, Home to Hobro and Away at Helsingor, but in the other order. They're going to be difficult games, but I tell you what, I think we might have a chance because I've made a tiny tweak to the tactic, but we'll talk about that more in a minute because we've got some other goings on that are quite important to discuss. Now, amazingly, Stephen Gardner actually won Player of the Year. I don't know how that happened. Um, I mean, he won. They voted for him. I just find it very strange that he won it because he didn't score that many goals. He got like 13 this year in like 18 games. I guess that's good, but it's still surprising. Now, something did happen over the Christmas period that has somewhat irked me, you, you could say. Obviously, we've got players coming in and going out. Lots of players going out on a loan. The, the usual stuff. A few of the Argentinians that wouldn't get work permits for us have gone back to Argentina. No big deal. But you'll notice that one player does seem to have left, and that is Fabian Tuvenon. Uh, he has gone to Lorient who I don't know what league they play in. Um, I don't know if they're in the... I think they are in Ligue 1. So that's pretty cool. Um, gone for £4,500. We do have a good clause. Don't worry, we've got the 50% of next sale clause. And that does interest me. Because if he's already been good enough for Lorient at the age... I and mean, he's playing the reserves. At of age of 18, we might get some money for him down the line. What annoyed me about this is that when... Well, firstly, the board tried to sell him out from underneath me for two grand, which really annoyed me. Thankfully, they did... Uh, take heed of my advice and uh, didn't choose to do that. And then I unfortunately had to take an offer later down the line. But the most annoying thing, and I think this is a new bug that's been introduced in one of the most recent patches, the offers come in. And now what I would always do and what I've done before on FM18 on my previous save with Lichnia in Iceland, player comes in, they want to bid on them. That's fine. I then put in a clause that says 50% of the next sale clause and I make that non-negotiable. Simple as that. And then I'll mess with them. Basically, the only thing we're negotiating then is the actual price of the player. I want that 50% and I will not budge on it. Totally fine. Sometimes when you suggest, they'll automatically withdraw because they don't want that clause. That's fine. But most of the time, they'll let you haggle over the price of the player. And sometimes you have to take a bit less, but generally taking a bit less up front and pushing it down the line isn't such a bad thing. And if they want the player loads, they'll sometimes give you even more money. Now, what was happening with him, and I think this is a bug now, Every time I made it non-negotiable, and I made sure it was non-negotiable, not semi-negotiable. I know you can do that as well, but I've tried both and it didn't work with either of them. The moment I hit suggest terms, it just removed it again and they came back with the same offer without resubmitting. It it was as if it's just ignoring the fact that you put non-negotiable terms into the deals. But the AI can do it when you try bid on players, because I tried this on another one of my saves. So that's very annoying because it feels like you're actually being put at a disadvantage to the computer now. Um, thankfully, we got the clause in there anyway, but not in the way I would have liked. And I feel like we could have got more money for him had we been allowed to negotiate with Lorient. But there you go. Casper Nielsen has also left to go join uh, Allborg, as you would imagine. I did, again, agree a loan deal for him for two years. And as usual, because he's Danish, he turned it down. So, you know, good stuff there. Anyway, that's enough about my ranting. A couple of things that people wanted to see, one of which was the scouting screen. Now, as you can see, there are no recommendations on the scouting screen. And the, the reason for that is fairly simple. The, they can't find any players. My scouting budget, I use it not once in the last two years on this save have my scouts actually brought me any players into this recommendation because they're only looking in Denmark and none of the Danish players will join us. The other thing folks wanted to see is this screen. If we filter it by transfer and loan. Now, what usually happens with this is the only players that will appear are former players or the occasional player that I scouted that wasn't from Denmark, but that only appears on the loan one. And even then it doesn't always appear. So let's have a look. So all of these players are either former players of ours, even the Danish ones, you'll see, look, Hjurland, always a former player. They'll join us, but they're former players of ours. Not a single player on this list is from a different country, uh, sorry, is from another Danish team 
they just won't. These are all former players of ours, and it's the same with the loans. With the loan, look, not a single player in the world is willing to join us on loan. That that's just how it is. So that's that one out the window. That's the reason I don't show these screens because there's nothing to show you. Unfortunately, it is blank. As for finances, things aren't looking so good on that one. We are minus two hundred grand, but admittedly, we are going to get some prize money soon. Uh, in a couple of games time and then a second set of prize money at the end of the season and hopefully if we can maintain top half that should be around about 300 grand in total so it's not as bad plus sponsorship and potentially player sales and clauses it's not as bad and it is because of the fact that we've got these um, Argentinians a lot of those African players I signed on those work permit deals some of them of course will be leaving in the summer and I'll be much more picky about who I give those contracts to now, what I have been doing, someone suggested me turning on the MLS, and I didn't really understand why at the time, but oh my god, if you're doing this save or a save like this, turn on the MLS. There is about 400 amateur players per year that come through their academies, and you can, if you get them at the right time, you can poach maybe half of them. Now, of course, half of them then don't join you, but I think we've still got another 100 players from the MLS joining us uh, over the next couple of years. Now, most of them will probably be rubbish, but you never know. There's some very strange nationalities. There's a Thailandish guy, Thailandish, a Thai guy, ooh, and a guy from East Timor in there. So hopefully when those start coming in, I'll start showing you them. But if we get a few players from there as well, that's amazing. I'm also going to turn on Portugal, because apparently you can do something similar there too. One more thing is that Ponzio is refusing to sign a new contract, and he is now the best player in the team, and he'll probably leave in the summer. Bit annoying, but what can you do? Now, a couple of Argentinians have joined us, and I have given them contracts because we needed a striker, basically. Herman Martinez is constantly injured, and luckily, we've got this guy. This is Martin Ferro. Um, I think he's solid. He's got 17 finishing, for crying out loud. He's not exactly slow, either. Uh, I, I'm a fan of this guy. I think he'll be decent, and I think he'll be better than Martinez. That's certainly the way I'm looking at it. His passing is poorer, but I don't really want that character to be passing. I just want them to be scoring goals. He scored seven goals in the friendlies over the Christmas period, so I'm pretty pleased with him. Ferro, that is a great name. Latin Ferris <gasps> Iron Man. The other Argentinian that I signed up that I thought was worth putting straight into the team is this guy, Daniel Lopez. For the main fact that he is actually fairly confident in that wingback role because he's got seven crossing and eight dribbling, and he's pretty bloody decent. So I think he could be a real game changer in that role for us. I have made one tiny tweak to the tactic on based on someone's comment, and I think it was a sensible idea. Uh, not in this one, actually, it's in the normal one. I've taken it off of get stuck in because like someone said, you can see a lot of free kicks and the reason you concede so many free kicks is probably because of that instruction. Now we won't concede loads less, but I definitely think it will improve us slightly. Um, if we concede less free kicks, then we will concede less from free kicks in theory. Now I've been testing this over the weekend on a sort of test march to safety save with Grimsby and another one with Bradford. And I'll tell you what, it does seem to make a hell of a difference. At least half as many fouls committed and no free kick goals whatsoever. So interesting. Also worth noting that Having players that are solid for these wingback roles is going to make this tactic a game changer uh, because I did have that on my those other test saves and it makes this tactic, it gives it a whole new level of quality. I, I promise you that. So I can't wait to get to that stage. Hopefully Lopez is the first step in that direction. Now I'm just going to put this guy Augustin, he's a Spaniard uh, in the team because we're, we're struggling at centre-back with losing Nielsen and Tuvanon in the Christmas period. So we're going to have to go back to Cisse, Carrizo and now this Augustin lad um, because... We need something there. It's not looking strong for us. Middle's looking a lot better, though. Also, with uh, Julian leaving, of course, because he was only on loan, we're going to have to resort to Ingolfsson. For some reason, Thorstensen is on loan at HK, and he does have a loan recall clause, but it won't let me exercise it. You could see it, but it's greyed out, which is strange. Is it because it's not in a transfer window? But if that's the case, what's the point in the loan recall clause? But hey, let's get into the game and see what we get from here. Right, so Helsingor, we've already beaten them once this year. They play that kind of wide system. I'm just going to kind of go with what my... I'm erring on the side of letting them do that more uh, lately because it just seems to work better. Assertive. Uh, do we have... Uh, we don't. Uh, let's just do with this one then. Question of the day. And today's question is this. How far do you see England going in the World Cup? Who do you think is going to win it? Um, England, of it, no. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like if we can get out of our group, there's a good chance with the right draw we could maybe get to a quarterfinal at the very, very maximum of our capabilities. As for winning the World Cup... I feel like since it's on a sort of a slightly more neutral term, if you like, from the actual major nations in it, probably someone like Brazil will be keen to put that to bed after what happened at the last one. So I'm going to say Brazil. Yeah, I'm sticking my neck out, didn't I? But anyway, yeah, let me know who you think will win the World Cup. I think we might have already done that one, but how far you think England will get? Or how far you think your nation will get? Let me know in the comments. And if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QRTD. Ball in. Sucar and a good save from Garcia. Tough start here against Helsingor. Um, but we've only committed one foul so far, and that, that's always a nice sign. Right, here we go. Oh my god, what on earth was Pharaoh doing there? Sukkah, Mohammed, win it. There we go. Not quite to anyone useful, uh, but we'll see. 
I, maybe I should have just gone with the outri outright attacking idea for this uh, game because let's face it, we're not going to be getting many chances. Stukla is getting a lot of space. Oh, we've gone long, interesting. Gardner wins it down. Ingolson, Ponzio into the channel. St. Brendan's onside. Go on, Brendan. Brendan makes it 1-0, B67. This is incredible. And is he offside? No, for some reason, I was looking at the linesman and often the linesman will go back to the passing moment of the ball and claim it's offside. This is an incredible ball through from Ponzio. God, I hope we can hang on to him. Amazing run from St. Brendan. Turned out that's a real dude, by the way. St. Brendan, patron saint of boatmen and Wales. That, that was Wales, the big blubbery fellas, not, not the country. Mohammed down to the line. Cleared away. Back in. Torp, he's going to shoot, you think, and blocked again. We're winning away at Helsingor. This would be a huge win if we get it. And the great thing is, because we're already on counter, we don't really have to do anything from here other than sit and soak up pressure. Gravgord, can he find Brendan? He does. Brendan drops it back for Gravgord. In behind for Ferro. Can he pull something out of the bag here? He's in, and it's a poor effort from him, but another chance there. If you're wondering why we've not talked about the youth intake, it hasn't actually happened yet, uh, which means it might happen in between the two games and we get to talk about it live, which would be cool. Ball in. Oh my goodness, Stephen Gardner makes it 2-0. This is unbelievable. I'll tell you what, whatever Helsingor play, our tactic works well against them. Um, we'd actually, I mean, this is a decent win for us. Actually gives us a chance here. Brendan out on the wing here. He's got a goal and an assist. He just lumps this into the box. Steven Gardner getting up at the back post with the header. Um, goalkeeper probably could have done much better, but we're 2-0 up. Yes! Niche being a beating V-ball. Oh, Ingolson. Augustin. Can he turn and shoot? Uh, oh my god, he has. He's offside this time. Surely Ponzio is offside that time. Yeah, and they've got an injury, though. We need to talk about that first half. We were excellent. We didn't create many shots, but look at the chances. One click cut, two half chances, no real long shots. Also, only six fouls. That would have been like 12 in a previous game. We're 2-0 up. They've made a substitution, and I'm pretty certain the guy they brought on has had to go off as well. So this is very good for us. I'm tempted to move him from a poacher to an advanced forward because he's actually good enough for that. And I'm going to maybe move... No, we want Brendan definitely on the right. I'm going to put Gardner in the middle and move Ferro out to this left-hand side. Just since we're 2-0 up, and I want to give him a chance to find himself a goal, maybe. Ball in from a corner. And, oh my god, how did that stay out? It's why we had one like that in the last game, too. No matter what I do, I'm going to keep Ferro in and not substitute him, because I do want to give him a chance to find a goal. Zacho. He's got to look long. Train him. But we've got so many players back at the moment. Nobody's particularly going out to get stuck into tackles. We've still only committed seven fouls. Look at that for a ball. Ah, oh, that's poor. I actually thought that our player was going to win that. Bay, ball back post. Train them. Good save from Garcia. The pressure's starting to mount from Helsingor now, though. Right, sorry about that. I had to go answer the door. Um, Borup in his spot. A little bit out of breath now. Apologies. Right, Diamosa in for Ingolson, probably. Oh, is that really the one I wanted there? I probably could have done something better. We'll leave it for now. Um, we've got options off the bench in terms of strikers, but we'll stick it for now. And now I'll have a breather. I gotta say, it's starting to look a lot more like this. Oh, god damn it. Curler with the goal from a corner. Well, it's been a while since we've had them from a corner, but they have really threatened from corners today. It does certainly seem that way. I think we're a bit fortunate to be too... One. We're a bit fortunate to be winning this game. They've created some damn good opportunities. <laughs> Honestly, I would take a point, but not if we can see both goals from corners. Then I will be very angry. Uh, Mohamed. Out wide. Ten minutes to go. Can we hang on for what would be a very, very good win? Train him. Furia. Well, that's poor. That's a really poor. Feyer's goal, that's not a good goal. I mean, it's a good goal from him, but it's a bad goal for us to concede. Oh, don't go on and lose the game now, guys. Come on. Um, I know they're going to be throwing everything at us, which is clearly what's happening. Uh, it does seem that you get a lot from doing that. I just thought we'd cleared the danger here. We have everyone on it. And uh, it's a good finish in the bottom corner, I guess. It's just frustrating. Ah, don't worry. Just don't lose. There we go. Two all. I think that's a good point. A point that we perhaps didn't deserve, but it is a good point nonetheless. Uh, they came back into that with a vengeance. Right, I'm going to quickly get going forward because my camera's about to die. Right, we're back, sort of, uh, in that I've just got this news item here. B67 announced new intake of youth players, and I thought that before I looked, it would be cool if we started the camera so we can look at it live uh, together and see if there is anyone decent. I I'm not going to bite around the bush. Let's see what we have. Wonderfully talented group of players led by Sud and Anderson could have the makings of a potential... To be fair, they say that every year. Um, there's only one time... that Last year with Sud and... Um, with Nielsen, rather. They did say something about a diamond, I think. I can't remember, actually. Let's just go into the game. Let's, let's go into the team and see what we got. Ah. Ah, uh, that's a shame. <laughs> um, what we... Let's just look at the tutoring view just so I can see what their personalities are like. Personality, Resolute, Robert Otterson. That's a decent personality, um, if nothing else. I'm disappointed. I've got to say, I'm disappointed. Based on what it's been in recent years, I'm disappointed. 
Uh, but I guess we can't really complain. I mean, look what we had last year. Soren Anderson, this is our best player. What is he? He's a goalkeeper. A position we have real no need for. This has really been underwhelming, guys. I'm so sorry. I, I don't... I mean, I could show you some more of them, but, like, I just don't think there's... Whoa, he balled. Um, six foot four. Oh, he's a wing... A six foot four winger. So we've got him... This has got this gangle monster going down the wing. Um, yeah. Hmm. Unfortunate. Right, we're back for the game against Hobro. We've lost to them twice. Um, not expecting to do that well. They're in that position for a reason. I think the best we can really be doing at the moment, this season anyway, is just consolidate and get a top half finish. I'm, I think sixth or maybe fifth. If Marion Lee starts to slip up, then fifth could be on the card. But it really is a case of just don't fall back into the clutches of Freymad. Um, that point away in the last game is super important. For today, I was thinking about just going all out, but I, I kind of do want to try and at least sort of play to our strengths, which is this tactic. I'm going to persist with the same lineup last time with Ferro through the middle. I want to give him a chance. I think maybe he just had an off day. Once he gets up to match fitness and finds himself some link up with some of these guys, although he has already built one with Brendan, hopefully he'll start firing some goals in. That's the plan anyway. Now they play this weird Christmas tree of doomy type system, but with the wing backs. Um... What does my suggest... Mm, okay, they just want to mark up Babian. I... We'll, we'll, we'll see how things go in the game, and we'll make a decision on that kind of where we go. It, it does feel so much nicer to have a, a tactic that I'm at least confident with uh, that will win us games. Perhaps not these games, uh, because, you know, these are top teams. We, we've just played in this episode the second and third place teams in the league, so it was always going to be difficult to get any points. But the fact is, we've got a point. Against Helsingor, we, we got a point. Could have won, perhaps, but... Really, we would not have deserved that win, and it would have been the ultimate in nonsense how we actually won that game. So to be fair, that's a fair result. Gravgord, ball in. Gardner, ooh, what a good save from the goalkeeper. A chance for us. We are the home team, though, so you never know what we can cap we're capable of here. Burya, into the channel, but nobody there. They've only got the one striker, so that could come to our help. Brendan does brilliantly there. Ingolfsson, Lopez, right, in for Gardner. Ferro picks it up, drops it short for Brendan. He's got Gravgord, who's been playing amazingly over the last few games. He really has been excellent. Gravgord. Into the channel for Brendan. Can he pull it across for someone? He can. Ferro! And it's over the crossbar and a big opportunity there for, for Ferro. Tell you what, they are loving a long shot right now and long may it continue. I just feel like if we can just get some better centre-backs in over the summer period, that seems to be where we really do need to improve. Up front, looking much more rosy. Remember, Neil Hutchinson is available technically, I think, but at the moment, I'm actually pretty happy with the, the lineup. I think Gardner and Brendan O'Neill have done incredible things for us this year in the absence of Hutchinson. And Farrow looks like he has something about him with that 17 finishing. I think we just need to give him, get him into positions to use that finishing. Booyah. Oh, God. Ooh. We haven't exactly been fantastic so far, but then they've really only just taken shots from range. That's all they've done so far. Farrow. Oh, good save from Rask. At least he's trying to have a go now. Better. Maybe he'll score the winner for us. Just looking at them at halftime, they've had 21 crosses and completed exactly none of them. Whereas we've completed 20% of ours. I don't know. I kind of feel like if we went on attacking in this second half, we might actually be able to get something from them. Let's just take a quick look at the analysis. Look at the amount of space they're giving us out wide. I, I wonder if now is the time to actually try this out. Go on to the attacking version of this and also exploit the flanks and clear ball to the flanks like we were doing that one time before. Because we're getting a, we were going to get joy down there anyway. I, I want to try this out and see if it works for us. Because at this point, a draw, it, mm, I want to see if we can go and win this and actually sort of exert some dominance. I just want a big scalp. I want a big win today, so we can actually say we took four points off the top, well, off two of the top three teams in this league, which would be really, really something. Obviously, if we went in the lead, I would then switch it back again because we've been pretty solid at defending against them so far. Look at the space out wide, Ponzio out wide for Gravgor. Can he pick a pass? He Ingolfsson. Oh my goodness, what a chance that was. Right, so much better. Instantly in the second half, we get a chance. Right, 60 minutes on the clock. Pharaoh's still not having a good game. Uh, I'm tempted to just... It's a really important game right now. I'm tempted to get Martinez on instead and just try to shake things up a little bit. How's Lopez doing? He's doing fine. Uh, what other changes can we make? We've got Betza and Borup there. Can both come on. Uh, Diamosa perhaps for... Mm, I get the Mosa on for Ingolfsson. Just that we've got another player with a bit more of a, a that can pick a pass, basically. Caruso's playing insanely well. Uh, let's see. Might just leave it at that for now. For all their shots, we've probably had the better of the chances so far in this game. They've really not done a lot with them. Although, now that I've said that, they will immediately go and score from this cross. Good block. mosa has got a run on here. We've got four on three at the back. Don't mess this up. Martinez is in behind. Oh, nearly, 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 nearly. That's maybe why I want Diamosa playing there. Maybe we should play him there more often. Uh-oh. Babian. No, 
not. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. That was the chance for them, really. If they were going to win this game, that was their chance. I mean, I'd be happy with a nil-nil draw in this game if we got away with it. Um, but I just feel like there's one chance for one of these teams to take the win. And I think Babian had their chance. Maybe we'll get one too. Betsa, we are pushed very high. If we lose the ball here, it could be a bit trouble here. Livek. Uh-oh. Oh, God. We nearly won the ball back off them there. No, no. What a save from Garcia. He's just kept us in this game. Betsa. Oh, God, he's lost the ball. No. Nope. Right, go on, get the ball across the other side of the pitch. There we go. Get Mikhail Gravgard. Let him do his thing. Cissé. Get... Oh, oh dear, that's bad. That's really bad. We know what's about to happen now. Oh, this is the goal. No, and again, Garcia has saved us there. He has massively bailed us out today. He's my man of the match. I don't care what the thing says. Cleared away. Martinez. No, oh, he must be offside there, surely. Cleared away. Get to that ball. Ponzio does brilliantly. Now we've got four on one. Brendan, look across to the middle, lad. Oh, he's offside. Why did he pass it to the one player of the three that was off goddamn side? Oh, oh no. And that's another miss as well. This is incredible. Hobro should have won this game. They've created some chances late on in this one that should have won them this match. Um, oh, they might still do. Babian. Oh, now they have. <sighs> this is going to be tough against the really, really top teams in this league. Um, we maybe should have just stuck to counter-attacking, perhaps, but I just felt like there was something there for us. And if you don't go for those kind of situations, then this guy's been dreadful today and he finally gets his goal. Garcia couldn't keep him at bay any longer. Well, there you go. In the end, they deserve the win. I think the lack of quality defenders that we now have is definitely going to be a gaping problem for us. Um, look at the amount of key passes, very on the low side as well. Hopefully, we get, and a lot of those were played by Carrizo. So I think that that's an area we just need to look in, um, is defenders. That, that's the key thing for next year, is get some solid centre-backs in. But on the other hand, it is completely my fault for going on to attacking them. Maybe had we left that on counter, we wouldn't have left ourselves so open to them. And maybe on another day, we could have nicked a goal, or at least got a nil-nil draw from that game. But stuff happens like that and we need to sort of we need to get back on the horse we've had a couple of tough games but we still took a point and i didn't expect us to do that so we've got some slightly winnable games now coming up i think so in the next episode we've got roskilda at home and viborg that'll be tough at home but i think roskilda is a winnable one nisha being away may be winnable frem at home there's definitely some winnable games here just to sort of tide us over and keep us firmly where we need to be um in the live comms it's going to be vent sisla away and marion list away and that marion list game could be one that decides a lot about who finishes where, basically. Um, now, I'm going to have to go away and record these straight after this because I've got a lot of videos to record this week. So, if you have enjoyed this video, do drop a like on it. I know, well, I mean, the first game, we got ourselves a bit of a lucky result, perhaps. Second game, we would have been lucky to get anything from it, but hey, who knows? If you are new to the channel, subscribe for more videos like this on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the penultimate episode of the season where hopefully we sort of start to consolidate ourselves and get ourselves nice and safe. Although I think we kind of already are, really. But a couple more wins should see us over the line and we can start to build for next season. Anyway, I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.